So, uh, Jamie Kirk here from the wonderful world of Willerby, um, area sales manager for Scotland and Ireland. Um, as part of our virtual show and Willerby Live 2020, we wanted to do a short video which explains the buying process of purchasing a holiday home or a lodge. It can be quite confusing sometimes because at Willerby, we build the homes over 6,000 every year, but you can't buy one direct from us. We also get lots of questions about price, how you get them delivered and so on. Um, so to give a, a little independent advice and, and guidance, we've invited one of our dealer network to join us on the video today. So a very big welcome to Elton Masson from TLC, the leisure company one of our approved dealers in the east of Scotland, Lincolnshire to be uh, exact. So a big welcome, Elton. How are you getting on today? Good afternoon, Jamie. Uh, I'm very good and thank you for having me on. Our pleasure, our pleasure. So basically, you know, let's, let's, just, let's just start. Let, tell us a bit about, um, about you and your experience in the industry and, and, and what you do for us. Okay, so um, my name's Elton. I'm the managing director of the Leisure Company, and I've worked in the industry for 25 years, uh, and specifically in the area of helping families acquire holiday homes um, and helping them through the whole process from you know finding the right park and and, and getting the caravan. And I've been doing that for for, for, for 25 years, and it's been a, an amazing job, and I love it. Um, and as a company now, we still get so much uh, pleasure out, out of helping families. We're on second and third generation now, uh, helping them find their um, ideal holiday park and home. But, I mean, that, that's brilliant. I mean, it, it's, it's great to have someone, you know, on, on, on here with so much experience, so many contacts in the industry, you know, you've got a fabulous showground um, in Lincolnshire. Um, you, you do a lot with us as well. Um, so, you know, let, let's, get, let's get started. So firstly, okay. Elton, uh, from your perspective, can you explain the buying process of purchasing a holiday home or a lodge? Imagine everyone watching this entirely new to the industry, so we're starting from scratch. Yeah, not a problem at all. The most important thing, Jamie, is is the um, geographical location. So for anybody who's looking to purchase a holiday home, normally they have a threshold of travelling time between two and a half and three hours. Depending where people are in their, uh, in their age, they will maybe travel a little bit longer, but normally travelling time is important. So when people set out to find the ideal location, travelling time is one thing. And then more often than not, the locations that they do gravitate towards are where they've been on holiday before. Maybe they've stopped in a family member's caravan or they've just been as a child, you know, for a week here and there when they, when they used to go on their summer holidays and they just have a connection. So that is stage one is looking at the locations and wherever they may be around the country. Stage two is finding a holiday park that matches your needs. So there's many different types of holiday parks now from family orientated ones. You know, they are very much, um, have the privilege of entertainment, swimming pools. They've got lots going on. Um, you know, they, they are great for hours of fun, for entertaining the children. And, you know, they, they are very, very popular, certainly in the current climate. And then you get people who are at the other end of the scale that are looking for something that's a lot quieter, slower pace of life, probably really, the, they don't want the facilities. Um, they would just much rather have space and an area to relax. So, you know, you need to have a good idea of what type of holiday park you're looking for. And then once you've got a good idea of that is then moving on to the next stage and this is when we bring the holiday home to the uh, into the whole process so holly homes they're, they're they're vast you know in styles and 
uh, sizes and also more importantly price range so this is a real big thing normally having a good idea on what budget you um that you you are looking to work to gives you a good idea then of even by looking on the internet what sort of, what holiday home you're going to get for your money mm -hmm. so when you turn up at these in the area that you you like and you go down go around and visit the holiday parks that you've identified as being ones of interest to you you'll be able to get a good idea of the price of the holiday homes what level specification you know is this an entry entry level model so typically for first time buyers or maybe younger families uh, and then you can go up to the more press luxury range and then on to lodges as well i think i think that's the key and you know that you know we we've invested very heavily in our showgrounds um you know the one that we've got in, in uh, our factory in hull uh, yeah you know it's pretty much you know state of the art um there you know you've got you know where we get a lot of the consumers coming to, to view a lot of our, our range. We've got one in Scotland as well, which is just outside Livingston. There's others going to be coming online too. I think as well, though, I think you'll agree, you know, especially with this, I hate to say wretched COVID at the moment. Um, yeah. It's still there. It's still around us. But um, I think the consumer is, has been quite clever. You know, a lot of people have been locked up. You know, they've been, uh, uh, you know, not getting out and about, you know, obviously the latter part there, they're getting round the parts. But what we found with Willoughby is they do so much homework now, Elton, with regards to what model they want. You know, they, they scroll the internet, the, you know, the, the, the hits that we're getting on our, on our website is quite incredible. And they go through our full range and they pretty much know exactly what they're wanting before they even come to you. And that's... That's a trend that we haven't seen probably before in, 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 in sort of times. But I think that the key for you guys is, is that's a great, that's a great asset for you because obviously they've, they've done a lot of their homework first. They know what they want nine times out of 10, because obviously you stock pretty much every single one of our range within the yeah, in, in our model range and lodges as well. But I think the key point is when they do come, to, to your area and if we get a, you know we get a lead coming through our, our portal um whether it's by phone whether it's by email you know you know if, if they're looking for a you know let's obviously you know you're on the call if, if they're looking for something in the in the east of uh, east of england you know we'll obviously put them straight across to you and uh, but we try and um we, you know we try and get as much information from them first so that we can pass that on to you because the key point is they can pick a caravan as much as they want. They can pick a holiday home. They can pick a lodge. But you're 100% right. Until they find that part, which you are the key to, if that's the area they're looking at. So in that, just obviously touching upon what you've said before, you can find that part for that customer. You will have a, a network of customers that you deal with. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, so we have a network of around 60 holiday parks that we help support. And so, so our position in this would be that the holiday parks, not all of them like to stock the, 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 the Willoughby products sure. because they are, you know, they're, they're, they're vast items. And they, they would much rather use a dealer like the leisure company. So then the customer's got the choice. Because if they, let's say, for example, a park owner buys a holiday home, they've only got one or maybe two plots left on the park, and they buy two holiday homes that prospective buyers don't like the look of either, they've sort of pigeoned themselves, pigeonholed themselves into keeping them. So they rely on the dealer network to have the holiday homes on display. And actually, we supply holiday homes to the parks which then they display anyway. So, you know, more often than not, if it's, if it's one of our products and the part ring is up and say, the customer would like to have a Willoughby Waverley over a Sheraton, then we would just take the Sheraton away and put the Waverley there for the customer. So it works really well. It gives the park the flexibility to chop and change the caravans as per the customer's requirements. So, and that works 
Yes. Yeah, no, I, and I totally agree. And I think, you know, when you're obviously, you know, with the, with the network of the 60 parks that you've got, I think the key point is, you know, when you're going through your whole journey plan of that customer, you, you're obviously finding out the requirements. You're finding out, are they wanting the hustle and bustle? Are they wanting somewhere quiet? You know, and, and you know, like I said, what we've found, you know, so far, since lockdown, since all this sort of, you know, this, this, this wretched thing had happened, the top and bottom of it is they've done their homework on what, what sort of model they're wanting. That's but correct. the beauty is, the beauty is that, you know, whether they've seen it, if they've came to our showground, or if we've put them straight direct to you, you can show them around all the holiday homes. Then you can get the requirements. Then you can take them on the journey. And I think that's, that, that's a big, big bonus because people want to see, touch, feel, what they're going to be buying, and then obviously you can take them obviously to the next level of which part do you want to be on. That's absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, what you um, alluded to earlier in your in in your comment is that the internet now is such a powerful tool, and but we actually we probably only fill in the last twenty five percent, which is a very important bit. I mean, when people have done all their homework and they come to our showground, it is then coming down to touching it, feeling it getting emotionally involved with the caravan does it oh this feels perfect that this is what we hear from customers now you know this is just feels right for me it's an emotional purchase and one that when they get into that part of the the journey is you know we've, we've the holly park perfect tick we've got exactly what they need there we've got the caravan perfect tick and then it's what we do then is we help um, the client and the park bring it all together, you know, by we look after all the delivery and yeah. we help with the installation and the commissioning. And then, you know, our our uh, role in this, and this is sometimes where people do get confused between the manufacturer and the dealer. And then our role is to walk hand in hand with that customer through the through the takeover process, explaining how the homes work, and you know going through any any sort of snagging issues or, or or anything that may crop up in the future and so that's what we do as a dealer and one of the confusing things that often we get from customers is and they do ring willoughby they ring willoughby and they want to buy a caravan yeah and willoughby have to explain well no we're the manufacturer yeah what what we'll do is refer you back to the brochure where we'll and you'll see regionally what dealer to go and speak to. So here on the east coast of England, you've got our company, the leisure company. And then on the west coast, you've got three or four other dealers. Yeah. And that's because we're able to service that customer geographically a lot quicker and yeah. with a lot more personal service as they do in all of the regions. So, you know, I always say to the customer, if you like the product, I mean, Willoughby's got a fantastic showground and, you know, like ours, you know, go and have a look there and then go and see your local Willoughby distributor. Yeah. And then and, and ask for their assistance in getting you the right park, getting you the right products and then sorting out all the final package for you. You know, that's the three, that's the three P's we like to call it. Park, product and then the package. So yeah. it's... Um, yeah, and I think, you know, I, I you know, I'm very big on, on, on the journey, you know, and, and you know, let's be honest, you know, you know, going on the Willoughby journey is 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 uh, is super exciting because you know they're they're wanting to get a, a second home. They want to find the park that they, they want to be on. I think the key point is, you know, as Willerby, you know, we are the largest manufacturer in the industry. You know, yeah. and, you know, we, we, we try to aspire ourselves every single day to be better. And I think the beauty is with the dealer network, with you guys on board, you know, it's the whole package. And I couldn't agree more. You know, you guys, it's it's so, the reason we have dealers and distributors is because you do the one-stop shop. You do everything, you know. Yeah. You can find them the park. You can locate the unit, whether you've got it in stock or whether you have to order it, you know, obviously through us, I think as well. You know, once you've done that, you can get it delivered, sighted, everything re ready to rock and roll. And obviously moving on from that, you know, when, when you're sitting down at your, your dealership, your distributor, in your sales office, 
you know, you can go through the requirements really easy, really comfortably with regards to what specification they want. Uh, you know, you know, you know, they want a washing machine. Yeah. You know, all our models come double glazed standard. Um, yeah. you know, nine times out of 10, everyone goes gas central heating, but you go through that whole requirement list and find out exactly what, what they, you know, and, you know, I mean, tell me more. If, if a customer came into your showground and um, said, oh, I want to buy a Willerby, um, and we've been on the website, and, uh, you know, we, let, let's say we, we love the Waverly. You know, yeah. how, how, do you, how do you take that process forward with that customer? You know, give us an insight of when they, when they land on your dealership, yeah. how, does that, how does that go? All right. So the first thing we do is introduce ourselves, and we get to find out exactly how's the customer come to this stage where they're at. That's really important. Yeah. And, and more often than not, they've done the homework. You know, they've seen the brochures or they've been online and they've compared units and they've narrowed it down to one or two units. So then what we do is we go through the process of letting the people spend time in the holiday homes. I mean, we have them all set up a bit like you see them in the brochure yeah. and the people can go inside on their own, you know, uh, we'll stand outside because any questions that they have, we do, we, you know, we, we, we'll stand outside and we'll do that carefully and main social, social distancing. But the customer gets to go inside, spend ample time making sure that it is everything that they want it to be. Then we go over the specifications because quite rightfully so. There's loads of different colours that you can have now. There's different types of cladding. You know, they, they are from aluminium through to the, the top of the range can excel, which is basically yeah. a lodge style cladding. Yeah. It's just fantastic. Very popular. Very popular. Everybody, everybody wants that. You know, they, they want their, their, their holiday home to look a million dollars. And let me go through the detail inside. Some people want dishwashers. Some people want washer dryers. Yeah. Some people would like to have... Uh, certain things added speakers in the ceiling and uh, there's, there's a good list of things that they can yeah. have what we do is we make sure that we get exactly the specification that they want and then we can give them a price for the holiday home yeah. the next stage of that is this the delivery site and connection so once you've identified the holiday park we need to then add in those costs uh, those costs are delivery from the factory, like you said yes. earlier. Yeah. The um, installation onto the plot, the connection to the services, the testing, you know, basically making it ready for them. To do. Once we've got all them costs together, we're able to say to the, to the customer, here you go, here's your total cost for your holiday home on the plot. Now, one thing we've got to be careful of, Jamie, and I've, I've, I've not um, touched on this, on the journey of looking for holiday, holiday homes, it is very important to know what size you can go for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the, it, there's a lot of holiday parks out there yeah. that just haven't got the, you know, the largest sizes of the plots. Sizes, so that's yeah. always a really good question to ask. What available plots have you got? How large of a holiday home can we have? Because you don't want to fall in love with something and then find out that it's too big. Get it. So, you, so Get it. you know, that's an important thing. But once we've got the, so once we've got all the things done, uh, basically the customer places the order for the caravan. And, sure. uh, and, and I, I think as well, Elton, as we, you know, we, we talk about, you know, sometimes people getting confused when they phone us up, you know, you know, we've got our own showground managers, obviously on, on both uh, of our uh, locations. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of people, they do get a little bit confused. And I'm so glad you, you, you touched upon that of, um, you know, th they'll look at our website and they'll see the, the recommended retail price. And it's X works, obviously, with the VAT element. And I think a lot of people go, oh, I can get a holiday home for this price. You know, we try to, to, we try to educate them and say, listen, guys, you know, that is obviously a recommended retail price. X works, X delivery. You know, you know none of the siting costs are within that. And I think that's why our dealer network works so well. You know, we've worked with you for a number of years now and, you know, built up, you know, our product network through, through your area as well, you know, greatly. Yeah. But I think as well, 
I think people, you, you can guide them and explain to them. You know, unfortunately, sometimes, or fortunately, it is all to do with location, location, location sometimes. Um, and, and I think, you know, depending on the park, it will vary on, on what, it, what it costs for, for, yeah. for RRP. And that's where, you know, you guys come into your own. You explain the scenario, you know, the, the sighting, you know, the, the delivery from our factory as well, you know, that comes yeah. you know, on the back, you know, not, you know, a lot of people new to this industry, they'll have seen these large holiday homes on the back of an articulated lorry going, what is this coming? This is unbelievable. And that's how we deliver them, whether it's a, a caravan, whether it's a holiday home or a lodge, they come on the back of, of articulated lorries to their finished location. That's right. Um, and, and I think that is a key thing that, you know, people look and go, well, why is, why is this so much more expensive than on the price list? And then that's where you guys, you know, in some cases it can be between 25 and 30% more, but yeah. that's where you guys come into your own and you explain with the different parts. Because you'll have different parts, Elton, that, that you deal with that have different prices. If somebody wants to buy uh, a Sierra off you on one part and then, you know, maybe 40, 50 miles up the road in a different location, it might be an extra five or six thousand pounds. And that's where you guys come into your own to explain why these these prices are that's right isn't it it is yeah you mentioned location 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 is is absolutely true um in the key coastal low low areas here on the lincolnshire coastline you can see 15 20 25 percent um in terms of additional charges only based on the fact that they've got lots of facilities lots of things going on you know it really is I suppose you can liken it to property. You know, property is different prices all yeah. around the country. It's based on location, based on the demand for the area and things like that. But, mm -hmm. you, but once you've got that perfect place and you've got your final package and price, that's it. You, you know what you're paying. Yeah, exactly. And that's, yeah, and you just move in and enjoy it. And I think as well, you know, just even touching, you know, a wee bit more upon that, I think, you know, for, for the consumer that hasn't done this before, which has, has really snowballed due to the lack of being able to jump on a plane, get abroad, you know, people are yeah. investing in holidays in, 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 the United, in, in Great Britain, in Ireland, they, they are, they're investing in it. And there has been a lot of, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of appetite for holiday homes here because, you know, they feel, you know, how long is this going to last? We're going to holiday for the family. But I think another thing to touch upon on a park as well is, you know, people do forget, Elton, don't they, that, um, you know, you're, you're buying a holiday home. Yes, through you guys, because you're going to take them through that journey and you have the network of parks. Yeah. But also what they have to remember, that they're buying it on a fully developed holiday park with services. You know, I always say to people, you have to remember, you know, these holiday parks, um, you know they've got they've invested a fortune under the ground to to support these uh, holiday homes. You know, and people do yeah. forget that. You know, yeah, and, they, and I, they, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I, I was just saying that the the investment now, um, yeah. you know, the, the 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 cost of acquiring the land in these coastal locations to develop holiday parks is, you know, it's considerable sums of money, and. Holiday parks today, and, and you quite rightfully said, quite rightfully said a second ago, some people may have a perception of what a holiday park is based on something that they did in the eighties, yeah, nineties, and they genuinely probably don't think that holiday parks have come on so much. You, you know, you have to go and have a look. You, COVID has done us a very strange thing, um, but in in this in this sector it's brought into the spotlight how great the UK holiday destination is. And Absolutely. the holiday home part of it, so the static caravan and lodge part of it, offers everything that people want during these times. A short drive away from home. Yeah. The ability to just keep it for yourself so you can leave yeah. everything, go home and come back and everything is where you left it. You don't have to worry about who's been in before you. Or They're anything. like fresh, you know. I mean, 
you know, we, we, we work very, very closely with the, the, the British Holiday Home and Park Association, the NCC, you know, and, and um, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like fresh air hotels. That's basically what, what we do, you know, and, and um, you know, we build them, you sell them. Um, and, and I think, you know, that, that is a, a, such a positive, a positive spin. And, and we have been, you know, we've been doing, we've been doing really well since obviously we opened back up cautiously you know, doing well, you know, there has been an influx of obviously, or I think the beauty is as well, and you, and you just touched upon it, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, they, they think about what they did in the 80s, yeah. and they go into a holiday home and they go, oh my God, this is, this is better than my home, you know, we've got double glazing, you know, sent gas, valent central heating, you know, you know, we even put air con, and 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 our and our top of the range marquee Vogue, you know, um, Outlook doors, wash machine, you know, it, it's just a home from home, and that's what we try to do. And I think that's where you guys excel because you can upscale them into you know what they want and the budget they want as well. You know, I think it's a it's yeah. it's a it's a beautiful partnership. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Don't, don't, don't be that. This is live. Don't, don't be that. That's fine. We're live. That's fine. Don't be that. That's absolutely fine. So, you know, we've talked a bit about, obviously, the journey. We've talked a bit about, obviously, the RRP, you know, how you guys explain that whole process. You know, we've talked about, yeah. um, you know, how you guys process with regards to what options they want what model they want, all that sort of stuff. And I think, you know, I think that's, that, that, that's a key thing. The other thing is, is, is that a lot of um, uh, consumers want to know about is, is, is the extra costs on park with regards to, you know, a lot of people say, oh, is that it? You know, I pay that and that's it. You know, can you touch upon, obviously, the extra charges, the site fees, etc.? Yeah. You know, can you give us your take on that, uh, Elton? Absolutely. So there's, there's two stages in terms of costs. So there's the initial cost, which is the holiday home. So we've, we've gone through building your ideal holiday home, your ideal will it be. We've got the price. That's set. Then the ongoing costs are how much does it cost to own this unit year yeah. after year? So there's a few things you need to consider. You've got the annual ground rent. Yeah. Okay. And they vary again, depending on location. And that's, where is that what they call, that's the site fees, isn't it, Elton? That's this, this annual I have it on its pitch. Yeah. 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 The annual pitch yeah. fee ground rent for the holiday home to stay on that pitch. Yeah. And again, that varies that's again from location in the country to facility. Yeah. yeah. You have to insure the caravan. So you've got that insurance. Yeah. And then you'll have the utilities. So you'll have water, yep. electric, and gas. Yeah. Yeah. Then the last the last set of fees then will be the where if you're required to drain your caravan down at the end of each season and then have it retested at the start of each season. Um, and that's you know that's an important thing because if if you don't use your caravan through the winter, because there's a lot of parks that you can now. Yeah. If you decide not to, you need to make sure you winterize the caravan. That costs anywhere between you know forty and seventy pounds, and it means that at the start of the season you can just turn your water on, turn your gas on, and away you go. And I think as well, obviously, site fees. You've just touched upon it there. They will differ because you know if you're buying a, a single unit holiday home, they are going to differ from buying a lodge because yeah. they come in two halves. That's so right. a lodge will be obviously a little bit more expensive because you're taking up a little bit more real estate on a holiday park. Um, right. So, so they're, they're going to do that. Am I right in saying that it will be more for a lodge? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's a one unit lodge, I should say. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So for a double lodge or anything that's 16 or 20 foot wide, you generally pay in anywhere between 20 and 30% more for your ground rent. Yeah. To, and, as, as opposed to a single, a single yeah. plot of the same park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the beauty as well as as, as with our distributor network, dealerships like yourself, the park networks, they go through that. And and I think, you know, the consumers now want full visibility on on what they're actually purchasing. You know, Correct. so obviously the whole journey plan, 
is obviously we want them as Willoughby to buy a Willoughby. Um, but then it's the whole journey to say, well, where do we want that Willoughby to be on? And that's for us to find that, then push that on to you. Then obviously you go through the network of your parts. But the beauty is, and I'm so, so glad you actually brought that up, it's the breakdown of what exactly they charge, you know, those individual parts charge. I think that's a key pointer as well, because people just, you know, we want to get as many people involved uh, in, in purchasing holiday homes and, and, and buying into staycations. And I think it's so good that you, you, you brought that up there with regards to, you know, it's your site, site fees, your utilities, which is gas and electric, your yeah. drain down procedure, your gas tests, all that sort of stuff. I think they have to know what they're actually going to be paying for uh, as well, which is key, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's, the annual running costs are really, really important because when you're choosing your holiday park, you just want to make sure, and, and this is something that one of the top tips that we give people is when you're, in, when you're buying a holiday home, make sure that you do choose a park where the running costs are appropriate for the next 10 years. Yeah. Because they're long-term purchases. Of course, of course they you are. Know, and you don't, you know, and, and making, and this is a really big thing, is making sure that you do choose that part properly and that you're not overpaying for facilities that you don't need. Yeah. Um, Fair point. Because, you know, they, they just become a, 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 an expensive non-essential. And, and, and just plan, just plan for 10 years. We're going to own this caravan for 10 years and ask yourself the question, can, can we afford these running costs? And do, are we happy to be here? Can we see ourselves being here for the next 10 years? And, and that's the emotional side of the purchase and the considered side of the purchase the customers really need to consider and make. Yeah, I think as well, you know, you, 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 we're, we're moving like a glove here. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, I think the next thing there with regards to that is, you know, the next question I want to ask you is, on park, we do get quite a lot of people phoning us and saying to us, you know, how long can I keep my holiday home on the park? You know, can I part exchange the holiday home to get something better? Because, you know, in an ideal world, you know, as a manufacturer, you know, we would love someone to buy sort of, you know, maybe a, a, an entry level model and then keep moving up every two to three years. That would be great, but it doesn't always happen that way. But, you know, if a customer came to you and you pointed them in that direction of a park, and they asked you, how long can I keep my holiday home on there? What is the sort of, uh, what's the rule of thumb there with that sort of stuff? Well, it, it varies. Yeah. It does vary between location and park. Yeah. I mean, in more recent years, and um, when you look at the standards that the caravans are being built to and the, and, and the quality, a lot sure. of parks don't operate a fixed period sure. time scale which is which is a really sensible thing to do sure. right. um, sometimes you have smaller parks in in in, the, in certain locations where they might turn around and say well we'll inspect your caravan when it gets to 20 or 25 years of age okay and what they'll do is they'll put in and they know this has been happening for many many years and as long as the caravan's in a good working order yeah. and you know it fits it fits within the, the the caravan park they'll continue to extend the license so so you do have two different types of um, um park structures there yeah. more often than not people but you'll find, guide them you'll guide them in that way yeah you? absolutely you know we'll guide them if, sometimes people do say to us look we want to make sure that we are in this type of location we don't want to be spending more than this on site fees and we don't want uh, a, an age limit that's going to be impacting on us um, before retirement and we're able to then go through our list and then offer the customer a choice of parks yeah. that best fit their requirements exactly. so yeah and we really try and work to uh, to their their specific requirements but I think the, the caravans are fantastic now and and we find that because they're, they're being built each year they're getting better and better and better it's not long before after and I, this is why i say the 10 years it's normally between year six and ten that people are thinking we need something a bit bigger now or we really yeah. love it yeah 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 or 
okay, we're going to be coming down longer now, so we want something with fancy cladding on. It's a good thing for them that they got that option to upgrade. And I think there, you know, you've just nailed it right on the head there. You know, people aspire to get a better product all the time. You know, it's like a car. You start off with a, a, a Bobby basic car and then you, you know, you get up to that Mercedes, you know, BMW type model, you know, and even get up into something a bit better depending on what your budgets are. And I think the, the key point is there with the dealer network, as obviously I'm speaking to yourself, they've built that relationship with you and they know how yeah. the procedure, because they've went through that whole journey at the start. So it's, 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 it's great because then they know, right, great. I want another holiday home. Um, let's, uh, let's uh, drop, drop a, let's drop in and see TLC and see what's, uh, what's happening. What's, what's new, what's fresh. And obviously we're always working with you guys to uh, show off our new products, tell you what's coming in through the pipeline, you know, you, you, you were at our, um, our launch event of our, of our brand new Brookwood and uh, Malton models, and, and they really have went an absolute storm, to be honest yeah, with you. I, you know, they, they are. You had some great comments and feedback as well from it, you know. On, on that as well, um, we're, we're talking about, the, you know, upgrading if, if, if they're an existing customer, of obviously the new customers will come to you and go through that journey. We do get caught asked quite a lot of questions with regards to um, a residential specification of holiday homes. Yeah. So, yep. you know, can you explain in a little bit more detail the difference between holiday home spec and um, residential spec on a, on, a, on a holiday home and a lodge? Yes, I mean, so the, the two variations are, first of all, size. Um, Residential specification caravans tend to be wider than the average single caravan or holiday home. Let me refer back to this holiday home, the, the average holiday home. Yep. So they're 13 foot wide or 14 foot wide, and then they go up as big as the double units, which can be 16 and 20 foot wide. Yeah. They're manufactured slightly different in the fact that they have a lot thicker insulation throughout. The, re the reason why that is is because they've got the, the ability to be used all year round if yeah. your chosen holiday park has the relevant site license. And that's really important. I mean, even here on the East Coast where traditionally it's been a March till November season, since COVID, a lot of the holiday parks are staying open till January the 5th or even all year round. Oh, so really? Yeah, and we've seen a real big uptick in people asking for residential specification because we can see this being an ongoing thing that you'll be able to use your holiday park for 10 months of the year, maybe even 11 months or 12 months of the year. And quite rightfully so. If you've got something that you love and you've invested your hard-earned money in this leisure time, in yeah. this person, you want to be able to use it as much as possible, but you want to be warm. Yeah, no, and, and I, you know, we, we are finding the trend as well that, you know, our our entry level sort of um, residential specification unit at, at the moment is our, you know, it'll start probably at our Sheraton 13 foot wide range and, and, and go up. Yeah. yeah. There's other models going to be coming, but it is the residential spec does start at the sort of higher range models so you know what we tend to see is obviously your sort of entry level mid-range you know they they, they they start to be where you start off and then you get up to that sort of level of residential and it is quite considerable because you know the, the stereotypical holiday experience you know from from my time you know be, being on a holiday park i think as well though um it was always sort of March to October, but you've just obviously said there, they're open so much longer now and we're building them so much better. Yeah, that's, it is. And, it, and it's great. You know, we've, we've championed for many, many years to, to be open longer. You know, people are really happy to holiday in the UK. They, they genuinely are. I mean, if I go... If I go and hold in the UK in October or November, I'm not going to complain about the weather. It just doesn't no. happen. I know what I'm going to get. But if my accommodation is nice and spacious and warm, 
it's as good as going any time in the year. Honestly, it's such a pleasure that we, we've got the holiday homes now that can match the seasons. Yeah, uh, and, and I think, you know, that's what we try to achieve. You know, when we are designing holiday homes, when we're looking at gaps in the market, where we need to, obviously, where we need to try and focus on, you know, I, I think it will be. I think you'll agree, you know, from, from, from dealing with us for so long now. We try to have a holiday home that fits everyone. Yeah, you know, that's correct. Whether it's, whether it's from our sort of entry-level grassmere type product right up to, obviously, our piece de resistance, which is obviously the, um, the Vogue. And then, obviously, you've got the Lodges, which is our clear water up to the, uh, up to the Portland. Um, but then, obviously, you know, we, 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 we opened up the Bespoke factory as well, so we do that. So we've tried to be the one-stop shop so that you've got plenty to offer your customer base. That's absolutely right. The, although the holiday homes are somewhat restricted by a range of different sizes, sure. the creative design now and, and the, not just the design, but the prices that they are and where yeah. they start, fantastic. You know, you can get yourself a beautiful brand new holiday home, it's sighted and connected, re it's, it's ready to enjoy, for, for under £30,000 yeah, these days yeah, on, yeah. On, those unselected parks. Sure. And, and I'm not saying that's not a lot of money, because it is, but it's a, it's a lot of happiness and it's a, it's a really great experience. Having a holiday home that's yours to keep is, and, and this is for the people that may be watching this that have never really got into the, uh, the, the, the static caravan holiday home um, thought process. Having one that's yours to keep is it's so rewarding, and that's not us saying that. That's the people that have been, you know, coming to TLC, and like I said, we're on like third generation now. They're coming to us, and yeah. they just know how important it is that they can jump in their car on a Friday afternoon, and within a couple of hours, be at their happy pe happy place, you know, with the dogs, either walking in the countryside, fishing in the lake or on the beach, it's theirs. The other question I was going to say to you as well, obviously you, you've got your finger, you, you've got your finger on the pulse of how the industry is, is um, performing at the moment. Yes, you know, as a manufacturer, you know, we thought our world had ended in, in March. You know, I think yeah, everyone I thought, oh it. my God, you know, how, what is the landscape going to look like? You know, we had to shut our factory down so, you know, we're never going to get that back because, you know, we stopped building and, and we had to, it was the right thing to do. Um, so, you know, for three three months, we came back in June. Um, we were the first manufacturer to come back. You know, we, we, we've spent a, a vast amount of money on, on training um, and all the correct procedures to be COVID safe in the factory. You know, we've got 800 um you know, employees that work in our factory, and we had to make sure that th that was all absolutely, you know, belt and braced. But the beauty is, you know, we've got, you know, we've got five production lines, um, and they're all separate. So if something goes wrong with one, we can hopefully try and, you know, stop that and, and keep the other ones going. But that's going to be a challenge uh, as well. But, you know, what what is the demand out there? You know, ha has it been good? Has it been brilliant? strong you know has it been bad as, as it, you know I'm, I'm hearing throughout the land it's it's been pretty pretty positive what's your take on it yeah i think i would describe it as crazy mm -hmm. uh, it, that that's all i can describe it yeah it, when covid came in a in, in a very very similar position to you we wondered where was we going to be in four yeah. months yeah if you'd have said to me that by the end of September, Elton, you'd have sold more new caravans than you've ever done. And you'll have a full order book for pretty much all of your sales for 2021. And you'll be placing more orders yeah. with Willow to make sure you can meet demand. I'd have probably said you're crazy. But that's how it's been, Jamie. You know, this, the, the holiday home industry here on the East Coast has been booming yeah. and you know and we and the people who've been here and they've done this the first year 
the feedback's been fantastic. Yeah. They can't believe they haven't done it before. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and they're already saying, well, we're going to give this one a run, a test drive for a couple of years, and then we're going to go for something bigger, better, yeah. warmer. You know, and that's great. And, you know, we envisage that being the same for all of 2021. Uh, we've just placed an initial order with Willoughby for our 2022 stock. Sure. Uh, we're going to have to top that up again yeah. to meet demand. So it, I can only describe it as being crazy. So if you're a consumer, if you're a consumer yeah. watching this um, and um, you're thinking to yourself, do you know what? I'm absolutely sick, fed up of watching the telly. You know, it's not nice. It's still not nice. You know, you're watching that. When would you, is there a bad time? Is there a good time to buy a holiday home? Or with the appetite that is out there, you know, probably placing your order as, as, as soon as you can get on a, on a, on a distributor uh, showground and our whole showground or any of them you know when's a good time to do it uh, what would you say to, to that consumer um, Elkin well historically we would always say that a good time to start looking is around about now November December yep. time yep. because holiday parks would have have a few more plots available and we'll just be taking delivery of all the new the new models um, of which we are. However, because the demand is so high and we're, and we're able to sell the allocated bills before we get them, I recommend if you're interested in being ready for spring, you yeah. need to start doing your homework now, yeah. identifying the part, because yeah. you may find that once you've placed the order for the home, that the period than you'd like but that is that's the situation that we find ourselves in yeah yeah but it's still working think, on yeah <laughs> and i think that's what we are finding as well you know the people that are phoning us up the consumers are saying oh when can i get one you know we are out you know till you know probably mid to late next year on different models but the beauty is because we have the largest distributor network throughout the land and dealer network with you guys on board, but that's throughout the land. The yeah. beauty is you guys have got your orders placed. And yes, yeah. don't get me wrong, you know, you'll have obviously, you know, had a had a good a good selling uh, season with regards to the, 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 the shortened selling season since obviously everything, everything opened in June. But at least if they, they get their order in sometimes and do their homework, at least they know they're going to get something, you know, next yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah, and that's important as well because what we're saying there, and this is this is, I mean, we have on we have many many orders on on uh, in in place with you with with Willoughby there, but if you're wanting to have it a specific colour with specific features, yeah. and going back to the current situation that we have with with COVID nineteen and and the difficulty with the supply chains, working with with yourselves and knowing sure. how to be just yeah. in time. It's a, it's a challenge. There's no doubt yeah. about it. Where we'd, we'd, we would have been able to confirm um, the exact specification in a four or five week period. Yeah, it's been it's a lot further now. So it's I think it's like nine or ten weeks, yeah. and that's not long. Ten weeks from now takes us well into February, if not nearly yeah. March. So yeah. you know it's and when you're buying something, if you want it exactly how you want it, you do want to be doing your homework now. And, 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 and placing some form of order yeah. so you're confident that it can be there ready for you in spring. And I think as well, you know, you know you're, you're talking about 2021. You know, you're placing your orders for your 2022 models, Elton. It's, it's crazy. It's yeah. quite incredible, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I might have won the lottery by then. I might not want to sell <laughs> Well, if you do, make sure you look after the Jamie boy here, I can oh, tell you. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure, Elton. Is there anything else that you want to get across to the consumer that we've maybe missed out uh, that you want to say? But I, I think we've pretty much covered everything, you know, from the whole journey from, from, our, from our side right the way through the whole process. Is there anything else that you think we've maybe missed about the whole the buying process of buying a Willoughby? No. I think all I could add is 
make sure you write down all the questions that you have. And as you visit, visit the Holy Parks, ask the questions, make sure you get the answer, be very informed of the running costs, understand exactly what the park offers, what you're allowed to do in terms of ownership. Because there is, remember, Jamie, this is, there's some holy parks out there where you can't rent them out. Yes. Yeah. So, and it's just you and your direct family. Yeah. So you, you want to ask questions. Is this a private holy park or can I rent out? Yeah. And, yeah. and I think like, as well, you know, the, the, that, that brings into the whole fact of when they do that, they've found the park. And that's where we come into the into force with regards to, listen, you know, we want a Willerby, and then we can take them through that journey. So our step is obviously we'll speak to that customer and then pass them on to yourself or whatever it may be. You've already got that customer, and you obviously you know speak to us to say what what have you got? You know what what can we do? What's the lead times out till? And then obviously we can give you the your expectations of where we're going to be. That's that's pretty much what it is, isn't it? Absolutely, and I would encourage anybody if they're if they're just not quite sure where to start, even if they're looking in Scotland or whatever, by getting in touch with a dealer, mm -hmm. they will they will be given sound, solid information, yeah. a good platform to build on. You yeah. know, we're here to serve the industry, not not look after ourselves, and yeah. you know. If somebody from Scotland rang me and said, oh, I want to know information on parks in Scotland, I wouldn't be able to help them. Yeah. But, I wouldn't, but I know who would be able to help them, Jamie. And, you know, I'm, and you, we do that. We help each other out. So, you know, don't be, don't be worried to ring up a dealer and just ask them a few questions, even if that dealer may not even have any connections to the area that you're in. Yeah. We want to make sure that the purchase is right for them, right for their family for the long term. Yeah, exactly. And and you know what, you know, you know, you, you've, you've nailed it there. You know, we we are a cottage industry. You know, we all look after each other. You know, our yeah. distributor and dealer network is very, very tight knit. We all speak to each other. We get on very, very well. And we do what we, 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 we do things the right way. No, I think it's been a, a, um, a really worthwhile process. This I hope the consumer that is going to be watching this has enjoyed what we've uh, what we've had to offer them. Um, I think, um, you know, you guys at TLC, the leisure company, you know, we've worked with you for a long, long time. If if you're ever looking for a holiday home in, in the east of England, obviously give you guys a shout, no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, obviously we've got other dealers throughout the land. Uh, it's been my pleasure, Elton, to, to, to catch up with you as always. Um, I hope you have a good day and uh, take good care of yourself. Jamie, thank you ever so much, and uh, I hope you enjoy the, the rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you soon. All the best, Elton. Take care.